In this lecture, I will discuss about how a DFA processes strings. The first thing we need to understand about a DFA is how the DFA decides whether or not to accept a sequence of input symbols. The language of a DFA is the set of all strings that the DFA accepts. Suppose given an input string x equal to a1, a2 up to an is a sequence of input symbols. We start out with the DFA in its start state Q0. We consult the transition function del. We can say that del, uh, del of Q0 comma A1 equal to Q1. We consult the transition function del. We can say that uh, del of uh, Q0 comma A1 equal to Q1, this one. To find the state that the DFA A enters after processing the first input symbol A1. We process the next input symbol A2 by evaluating del of Q1 comma A2. Let us suppose this state is Q2. We continue in this manner finding states Q3, Q4, Q5 up to Qn such that del of Qi minus 1 comma Ai equal to Qi. For each i, if Qn is a member of F, F means final states, then the input a1, a2, a3 up to an is accepted and if not, then it is rejected. If you consider one example, so let us formally specify a DFA that accepts all and only the strings of zeros and ones that have the sequence 0, 1 somewhere in the string. We can write this language L as L equal to W such that W is of the form X, 0, 1, Y for some strings x and y consisting of zeros and ones only. Another equivalent description using parameters x and y to the left of the vertical bar is L equal to x0, 1, y such that x and y are any strings of zeros and ones. Some examples of strings in the language include 0, 1, comma, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, comma, and 1 triple zero double one. Examples of strings not in the language include epsilon, 0 and triple one triple zero. So what do we know about an automaton that can accept this language L? First, its input alphabet is uh, sigma equal to 0 comma 1. It has some set of states. Q of which one? You can say that Q naught is the start state. This automaton has to remember the important fact what input it has seen so far. To decide whether 0, 1 is a substring of the input, A needs to remember. In this, A needs to remember. To remember that one, there is some conditions. In the first condition is, has it already seen 0, 1? If so, then it accepts every of further inputs. That is, it will only be in accepting space from now on. The second condition is, has it never seen 0, 1, but its most recent input was 0. So if it now sees a 1, it will have seen 0, 1 and can accept everything it sees from here on. Third condition is, has it never seen 0, 1, but its last input was either non-existent or it last saw a 1. In this case, A cannot accept until it first sees A 0 and then sees a 1 immediately after. To remember this substring of 0, 1, initially the automata it is going to follow these three conditions. These three conditions can each be represented by a state. Condition 3 is represented by the start state Q0. Surely when just starting, we need to see a 0 and then a 1. But if in state Q0, we next to see a 1 then we are no closer to seeing 0, 1 and so we must stay in state Q0 that is del of Q0, 1 equal to Q0. However, if we are in state Q0 and we next see a 0, we are in condition 2 that is we have never seen 0, 1 but we have our 0. Therefore, let us use Q2 to represent condition 2. Our transition from Q0 on input 0 is del Q0, 0 equal to Q2. Now, 
Uh, let us consider the transitions from state Q2. If we see a zero, we are no better off than we were, but no worse either. We have not seen zero one, but zero was zero was the last symbol, so we are still waiting for a one. State Q2 describes this situation perfectly. So we want a del Q2 comma zero equal to Q2. If we are in state Q2 and we see a one input, we are now no there is a zero followed by a one we can go to an accepting state which we shall call q1 and which corresponds to condition one and uh, that is a uh, del q2 comma one equal to q1 finally we must design the transitions for state q1 in this state we have already seen a zero one sequence so regardless of what happens we shall still be in a situation where we have seen zero one that is del q1 comma zero equal to del q1 comma one equal to q1 therefore capital q equal to q0 comma q1 comma q2 as i said q0 is the start state and the only accepting state is q1 that is capital f equal to q1 the complete specification of the automaton a the automaton a that accept the language l of strings that have a zero one substring is capital a capital a equal to q not comma q1 comma q2 comma zero comma one del comma q not comma q1 you can see these three states are belongs to q capital q and these two are the inputs sigma del you know the del about what is what it is going to do q not is the starting state Q1 is the final state. So these are the five tuples are included in the finite automata. Let us discuss about uh, simpler notations for deterministic finite automata. So in this, uh, uh, specifying a DFA as a five tuple with a detailed description of the del transition function is both tedious and hard to read. Uh, there are two preferred notations for describing automata. The first one is a transition diagram. the second one is a transition table so let us discuss about transition diagrams a transition diagram for a dfa capital a equal to a q comma sigma comma del comma q not comma f is a graph defined as follows to draw the transition diagram these four conditions has to remember the first one is for each state in q q means capital q for each state in q there is a node second one for each state small q in capital q and each input symbol a in sigma let del of q comma a equal to p then the transition diagram has an arc from node q to node p label a if there are several input symbols that cause transitions from q to p then the transition diagram can have one arc labeled by the list of these symbols the third one there is an arrow into the start state q not labeled start this arrow does not originate at any node uh, last one which is the fourth one nodes corresponding to accepting states are marked by a double circle states not in f have a single circle these are the four conditions you need to remember to draw any transition diagram this figure shows the transition diagram for the dfa that we design and we see in that diagram the three nodes that correspond to the three states there is a start arrow entering the start state q not and the one accepting state q1 is represented by a double circle out of each state is one arc labeled 0 and one arc labeled 1 these arcs each correspond to one of the delta facts developed uh, in this diagram the substring 01 you can get using this transition diagram here a q1 to q2 there is zero uh, zero input and q2 to q1 there is one input so zero and one so zero one so at final at, at q1 state uh, the final substring you got here so that the q1 state uh, uh, it becomes the final state or accepting state
let us see a next notation for dfa which is transition tables so a transition table is a conventional tabular representation of a function like del that takes two arguments and returns a value the rows of the table correspond to the states and the columns correspond to the inputs the entry for the row corresponding to state q and the column corresponding to input a is the state del of q comma a so using this diagram you can understand how this transition table going to work in the a dfa the transition table corresponding uh, to the function del of uh, this example uh, we have also shown two other features of a transition table the start state is marked with an arrow and the accepting states are marked with a star since we can deduce this sets of states and input symbols by looking at the row and column heads we can now read from the transition table all the information we need to specify the finite automaton uniquely if you observe this diagram you can easily understand the transition table q not state is the starting state q not state with zero input it is moving to q2 state q not state with one input it is moving to q not state only that means self loop if you consider q1 state a q1 state with zero input it is moving to q1 state q1 state with one input it is moving to q1 state that means zero input and one input these two are on q1 state only these two are on q1 state only so that it is having self loop and it this q1 state uh, it became as final state star represent that this state is a final state you can see that initial state uh, represented with arrow symbol and final state is represented with star symbol and a q2 state the q2 state with zero input it is moving to q2 state means a self loop and q2 state with one input it is moving to q1 state so here the final state is q1 state star symbol so this why we are treating this q1 state as final state means uh, on q1 state we are getting substring of 0 1 so so that q1 state we are treating as a final state let us move to the extending transition function to the strings we have explained informally that the dfa defines a language the set of all strings that result in a sequence of state transitions from this state from the start state to an accepting state in terms of the transition diagram the language of a dfa is the set of labels along all the paths that lead from the start state to any accepting state now we need to make a the notation of language of a dfa precise to do so we define an extended transition function that describes what happens when we start in any state and follow any sequence of inputs if delta is our transition function then the extended transition function constructed from delta will be called delta cap the extended transition function is a function that takes a state q and a string w and returns a state p uh, the state uh, that the state that the automaton reaches when starting in state q and processing the sequence of inputs w or uh, we define delta cap by induction on the length of the input string in this uh, the basis is uh, delta cap of uh, q comma epsilon equal to q that is if you are in state q and read no inputs then we are still in state q and if you consider induction suppose w is a string of the form xa that is a is the last symbol of w and x is the string consisting of all but the last symbol for example w equal to 1101 is broken into x equal to 110 and a equal to 1 then a delta cap a q comma w equal to delta of delta cap a q comma x comma a now 
to compute delta cap q comma w uh, first to compute delta cap of q comma x this state that the automaton is in after processing all but the last symbol of w suppose this state is p that is delta cap delta cap of q comma x equal to p then then delta cap of q comma w is what we get by making a transition from state p on input a the last symbol for w that is delta cap delta cap of q comma w equal to delta of p comma a so this is about uh, extended transition function to strings in the next lecture you are going to learn about language of dfa